Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be having a closer look at a research note from Morgan Stanley, specifically a downgrade of the stock to underweight right there as you can see with the stock rating industry view attractive price target nine dollars we're going to take a closer look at this if you want some more information on this note and other industry research notes recently and into the future i now have a private newsletter that i've been doing for the past couple months um, that i think provides a lot of value so check that out in the description if you're interested so let's get started with this Near-term optimism in AI product cycle and valuation premium create an unfavorable risk-reward in shares as visibility on AIP monetization still remains low. The government segment appears unlikely to provide an offset and estimates already imply second half re-acceleration. Downgrading to underweight. So we can see they did raise their target from $8 equal weight to $9, but they are now underweight and are not recommending investors buy the stock. So let's take a closer look at this. I've just uh, redacted some of it to be respectful of um, the private work that they've been doing. But ultimately, let's break it down. The key points behind their downgrade, they say AI euphoria already reflected in the valuation but will likely take some time to materialize. So in terms of the valuation, yes, we saw the stock much lower than $10 earlier this year, and it went up above $20. Now it's back to 15. So we've certainly seen a re-rating in Palantir's valuation. That's what I was expecting and hoping for on inflection in the profitability of the company. And we've also gotten a boost by the AI euphoria, as they correctly note here. So they say, while Palantir's valuation multiple has re-rated materially year to date to 100% plus premium versus software peers on the premise the company is well positioned to capitalize on the secular trends surrounding generative AI, consensus revenue estimate revisions to date have mostly been to the downside and visibility remains limited on a positive inflection of this trend. So they're skeptical about AIP and the impact of generative AI in terms of a premium on the company and what that does for the financials. Palantir still appears very early as the company has clearly communicated that has yet to determine a monetization strategy for its solution. CEO Alex Karp saying, we'll figure out how to monetize it. Of course, if you've been paying attention, you've seen this. And I think largely this is not a reason to ignore the stock or be underweight it. It doesn't really have an impact, right? Because you want to see that growth. You want to see um, the customer acquisition cycle more than you would want to get profitability on a new segment. So personally, I don't necessarily agree with this stance on the valuation having reflected it, but the value not being there. I'll leave you to be able to make your own interpretation of this point by Morgan Stanley is making. I don't agree with it because I think it's more of a long game that they're playing and the market certainly can appreciate long games um, when it comes to growth stocks. And so let's see what else they have to say. Competition in the government segment could intensify going forward. So they say, while the government segment was once praised as an acyclical part of the business, able to offset broader macro weakness, <clears throat> the trailing five quarters have increasingly raised questions about the trajectory of the business and what normalized segment growth may look like. Okay, so they're a little concerned about the growth with the government side and is that reflective of competition is that reflective of something else it's tough to say in pinpoint it to exactly one thing uh, but personally i think the government business is not really part of the story here and i do think it provides a good backdrop to the commercial side um, for which there are many prongs to it um, so they say, as a result, we lack clear signs that the government business can lead Palantir's growth inflection in absence of an acceleration in the commercial segment. So I think that's exactly right. Personally speaking, I think the government business is, again, a very good backbone um, to the financial prowess and success of the company, but it's not the growth engine. I don't know anyone that think, thinks it is, so I'm not sure what Morgan Stanley's expecting here. Uh, but it is worth noting that you would want to see um, some modest growth in the government segment. So if they aren't able to generate that, 
um, then I think potentially that is a, a point for concern. But I think they will be able to because um, they're seeking to grow both at a, at a steady rate. Point number three here, guidance implies organic growth inflections in the second half despite recent softness. So taking into account the prior risks around lagging AI monetization and a decelerating government business, it appears that organic growth expectations for an acceleration um, seem ambitious. So they're essentially saying that Palantir might miss expectations going forward when you back out the SPAC and other contributions um, and the lagging AI monetization that they talked about earlier in the government business, maybe it continues to slow down a bit more. Um, could that be it lead to Palantir delivering under expectations? And the only thing I'll say here is I think Palantir manages expectations very well. I think the worst we could see is numbers in line with guidance. I don't think they would come underneath guidance. They use their software internally, and they do a great job of forecasting that. I don't think they're going to miss expectations. They might come in line expectations, which could lead to a drawdown in the stock because this is a growth stock with a high multiple and you want to see um, outperformance, but I don't think they will miss expectations significantly. So they say, where could we be wrong? Well, there are a few uh, areas that they note here. So a pivot in AIP monetization. If there's a pull forward there on the pricing impacts, investors could bring that in, which could limit the downside near term. And two, the S&P 500 inclusion could lead to more institutional interest. And they expect that currently, at current levels, that's a little limited right now. But the incremental buying would obviously lock up more shares and decrease the supply of the stock, which makes it easier for it to increase. And number three, large government contracts, such as the larger NHS and several DOD awards, could lead to um, significant outperformance in terms of material revenue that the company is able to recognize. So here we see the valuation expansion, the multiple expansion um, that Palantir saw as its PL inflected and AI uh, became a big focus for the markets. And so you see it was really trading along the average where it shouldn't have been, um, in my opinion, in the work I'd done when I published my report back in April, which was like around here. <laughs> so just a few more notes here. Estimate revisions have yet to inflect positively again to justify the valuation premium, but recent results continue to drive out of your estimates lower. So they're saying that the trends on some of these data points aren't great. Um, and so the consensus revisions have gone lower um, for 2023 and 2024 um, slightly. Um, but I think you, you see it's sort of bottoming out here. It's forming a base. And I think Palantir's you know, at least expectations have been managed. And personally, I'm expecting them to go higher into the future. So we also have the guidance implying a second half acceleration in organic revenue growth after adjusting for those contributions we talked about earlier. So they're saying if Palantir is not able to reaccelerate, that is certainly a downside risk. Personally, once again, I think they will uh, meet expectations if not exceed them. So what they say about the model here is they've raised their price target. Again, they're way under where the stock is. Um, and a lot of these points we've talked about, um, but they're talking about pre cash flow estimate and they have a 22 times multiple discounting at a 12.5% whack. Um, they essentially say what those multiples are, it, what they represent rather. So like a 1.6 X peg. Uh, personally, I think that could be a little low for a company like Palantir. Um, I think they could trade closer to two. So, you know, potentially proving why they're price target is a little too low uh, and you can make the argument for all all sorts of these um, different multiples they have here but last couple things here that I want to note um, is just where they see Palantir uh, against peers and on this graph make of that what you will as well as the uh, multiples compared directly to their peers EV to sales uh, for next year and EV to sales to growth uh, for next year so Palantir trading above a lot of these names here. Uh, personally, I think it's because they're much more quality of a company. And I think you can certainly make that argument. We've gone through a lot of that. Now I want to hear your thoughts in the comments and let me know what you're, you're thinking about Morgan Stanley's downgrade here, opinion on it, and where you think the stock goes from here. Until next time.